So I wanted to come to a place today called Chase Woods. And I did some research last night and I found the Rambler group actually suggested its members come and park here, which is a gravel area to the north of Rushmore Park. And the buildings behind me are what they call Cuttis Lodge. And I drove down this long, what felt like to me, a very private road to get here. And I've parked up in this area and I can't see any don't park here, private signs, keep out. So fingers crossed, it's a legitimate place to park with hopefully easy access to this area called Chase Woods, which I'm going to have a bit of explore today. So before anyone stops me and tells me to get out of here, let's um, go along the public right of ways, which seem to crisscross this area. My lone car in this car park, hence why I feel that should I be here? So I've been walking around now for probably a couple of miles around almost the outskirts of the woods and now I've come more into the woods themselves. Um, Basically, for today's video, I'm just looking for a single strong subject that I can use to try out a number of different macro focus stacking, focus bracketing, throwing some flash and some LEDs, lights as well, just to try a range of different macro shots, basically, and um, to help me determine whether I need to get a native macro four thirds lens for my camera because I've got a 50 millimeter macro lens but it's for the old four third lens system which although you can get an adapter to fit on my micro four thirds camera you are limited a little bit in terms of the fact that you can not use that lens to automatically focus stack an image you can manually bracket and focus stack that way and that's what I'm going to try with that lens and then also I've got the 12 to 40 for which I'm filming this section of the video on as well and that does do a degree of macro but it's only about 0.3 times magnification so I'll give that a whirl as well but first off I need to find a strong image that I can use for this little experiment today and even though I wasn't expecting it in these woods. I didn't know that these woods were a particularly good location for bluebells. There does seem to be quite a lot of bluebells out at the moment. So if I can find a, a nice strong single bluebell, that will um, do me fine, I think. And I think as well, what even though, let me just switch hands a minute. Although I was expecting the weather to be a little bit better today, there is a little bit more moisture and rain in the air than I was expecting but hopefully I can get a really nice subject with a little bit of that moisture on it as well just to add a little bit more interest in the actual composition itself so yeah so I'm just going to find a nice subject hopefully and then I'll um, talk again then Definitely harder than it looks. There's lots of subjects and I've found potential subjects, but what I haven't been happy with so far is the, the background. It's very busy or messy, so um, yeah, I'm struggling a little bit just to find a good single composition that I can use for this bit of macro experimentation today. So I'll keep looking, but fingers crossed I'll find something soon. It's really quite peaceful here though in these chase woods and I found now you can probably see it from some of the latest b-roll here that I'm in what appears to be one of the main avenues of this particular woods because there's a really nice lovely avenue of trees and with the bluebells it's really quite nice and I, I managed to catch my my first glimpse of a deer in these woods so yeah so despite the photography 
not being the best at the moment. It's been a lovely trip out to these woods, which I was really quite surprised that the car park was empty. You know, presuming you can you can park there to visit these woods. I'm really surprised, considering it's a bank holiday here in the UK at the moment, how quiet it is here. Maybe I've missed the dog walkers and the weather's not good enough for the day trippers, but I think now though there is a bit of more brightness and blue sky in the sky itself, so hopefully um, the conditions will get better. But yeah, I was so I was looking for a bluebell. My hair's a mess, sorry. I was looking for like a bluebell with a bit of water on it, but it's hard to get the amount of water right because um, if if there's too much water, the flower itself just looks a little bit downtrodden and heavy. So it's just trying to find a, a balance. I thought this particular specimen here that I'm sat beside would work, but it won't. Unfortunately, I just can't seem to get the composition that would kind of give me those options that I'm looking for. So anyway, back to it. So I've really struggled to find a composition that works for me from a bluebell perspective but what I have happened across now is obviously where they felled some trees as part of woodland management and then there's some obviously some nice unusual I would say fungi growth on the actual end of the trunk again it was a struggle to find a clear composition but I think this one will work quite well with what I want to do with it in terms of trying out some flash and lighting photography just to see whether I can lift the actual subject because I'm sure the straight up image will look quite flat but hopefully with the right amount of light in the right particular areas I can elevate this composition to something more than what it is without the addition of flash or LED. It almost looks like a statue of fungi Again, like I said earlier, it's quite a clear separation and hopefully I can pick up some, some lovely detail underneath on the actual mushroom itself. And um, yeah, hopefully this is a nice, with the wood as well, the texture of the wood, hopefully this will be a nice kind of abstracty type composition today. What I've brought, I'll just talk through it through now actually, while I've got you here is I've obviously got the camera and I've got a couple different things to go on my flash, like a flash modifier they call them. So I've got this thing which fits over the, the top of it to kind of diffuse the light a little bit better. And then this is my newest purchase here. So it doesn't look that, um, it doesn't give much away in this little bag here, but if I take it out of the bag, I need, I need another hand. Yes, yeah, so we've got this thing here, which when I let go, expands into this. And the idea is, is this fits over the lens, and then this material, when the flash goes off on the camera, diffuses the light a little bit better. So I have to give that a go. Right, so I've obviously got my macro lens. So basically this macro lens is a full third macro lens. So I need that adapter at the bottom here to fit it to this camera that I'm doing the video on. And then I've also got the option of using a 1.4 teleconverter with the macro lens. So the macro lens is 50 millimeters, so that's equivalent to 100 millimeter full frame, or I can convert it to, as I've done at the moment, to 70 millimeters. So obviously I lose a little bit of light, so it becomes f2.8 rather than f2. And that gives me, like I said, 70 millimeters. So that's equivalent to 140 millimeters on a full frame camera. And as I said, hopefully before, this works great as a kind of a standard macro lens. And I can do manual focus stacking, but I can't do automatic focus stacking in camera. So I'm gonna to have to try some different things with it today, along with the flash modifiers that I've just shown you. And then also in my camera bag, let me just put that up here. So I've got my Godox flash gun, which goes on the camera. And then I've also got this thing here, which is a wireless transmitter, which allows me to use the flash off the camera if I want to kind of direct the light. 
I've also got this thing here, which is like a, another flash modifier. So you kind of wrap this around the flash. And again, you can kind of direct the light where you want it to go when you're working on or off the camera with the flash. I've then also got this here, which is a bit of a portable LED light. So you can turn it on, change the color. Um, that's white at the moment, obviously at about 6,000 Kelvin. And then you can obviously change the intensity of the light and the color if you wanna add some different kind of effects, but I'll keep it at a more daylight type white. And if I'm really struggling with creativity, I can add on this extension tube. I think that basically makes the 50 millimeter F2 macro lens I've got into a one-to-one -one magnification macro camera. But with that, the depth of field becomes extremely difficult to manage. So I might give that a go as well on this one composition, just so I can see what all the different bits and bobs I've got here will do to the image. So what I'll do now is I'll just put up a montage of the actual subject and then the experimentation, how the images basically come out using all this gear here. So let's um, give it a whirl. What a lovely tree behind me. These woods, now I've found these avenues in Chase Woods, are absolutely amazing. And I, I can definitely, I definitely think autumn is probably going to be a good time to come back to this wood as well. It's probably just mentioning here that it's all TTO through the lens metering, just for expediency. I also be here forever trying out different manual power modes to find the best. I'm just looking at the moment for the best kind of modifier combination. So whether that's on camera with the diffusers and the deflectors or whether I can achieve a better look with LED light or off camera flash, just to see, yeah, what gives me the best result with a, the same composition. And even though I said I was using my macro lens before, I think at the moment I'm quite happy with the magnification from the 12 to 40 lens because I don't need to throw much of the subject out of focus because I want the texture of the tree in the image. I'm not using the macro lens on this particular composition. What I try and do is I try and find an image where I use the macro lens and go through the same ritual just as another kind of composition here today. This might be my macro subject here. It's a, I believe it's a wild garlic head. It's sister here is a bit more open, but the reason I liked this particular one, it's 
because it's kind of partially out, partially still in its kind of bud. So that to me was a little bit more interesting than perhaps one that was already out, which looks pretty nice really, considering it's a bit of a, a plague on gardens. Yeah, so I've just done some really good compositions here. Reduced the exposure compensation and put in a, a higher aperture. And I don't know why, but that really kind of helped to make the black, the background disappear. So I'll put in the results now, but I'm really pleased with this. And it's definitely an area that I'm going to have to experiment again in the future. I'd spent far too long trying to find a subject and if I'd known at the start that I could use the flash that way to basically eliminate the background altogether as I did with those last shots of the garlic then I probably would have spent more time on the ground trying to find a suitable composition but anyway I'm really pleased with that composition that I just found then and um, I'm definitely going to do this again. So yeah, it's been a good eye-opener as to see what is capable with Flash. And yeah, I seem to be really impressed with that diffuser as well that fitted onto the lens, which I think I paid about seven quid for on eBay. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please put any comments below and I'll promise next time to try and take a bit more time and explain the process and as well there was a lot that I wanted to kind of cram into this video and maybe I tried to cram too much especially with the field of flash and lighting photography if I had spent less time walking in the woods and more time actually on a particular subject it would have been for a better video but hopefully it gives you a flavor of what's capable with these kind of things and I think as well I set out to answer whether I needed to get a native macro lens basically for focus stacking and I think looking at that last result of the, the garlic bud coming up, I was certainly just looking at it on the back of the screen, I didn't even use focus stacking then, that was just a single exposure with flash and I think, and I was the good thing with flash is I was able to put in, dial in a narrow aperture to give me the depth of field that I wanted as well as losing that background so I think I've answered my question in this video that I set myself do I need a native micro four thirds macro lens no I don't I think the 50 mil macro four thirds lens is more than capable and is great it's a great portrait lens anyway and so this has saved me some money this video so yeah but anyway Hopefully I'll do a lot more of these kind of photography because I really enjoyed that. Oh, certainly the last um, half an hour where I actually stopped looking around the woods and actually found some interesting subjects hopefully to take pictures of. So anyway, we got there in the end. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.